your ongoing application to declare interest and turn off your mobile and switch your tablet uh, to silent, please. Mm -hmm. Then today's business, we have um, two SLs and two SLs, and also we'll be looking at correspondence following uh, our last meeting. Uh, apologies, none at the moment. Um, any members aware of any, any apologies from your, what, what, your party? Peter, no. we may be slightly late, but he's, he's on his way. way. Okay. On okay, thank you. And um, draft minutes of last meeting, uh, this, the 10th of April and the 1st of May. Both uh, sets of minutes. Uh, members content to agree the minutes? Agreed. Yes, thank you. So item four is on matters arising. Uh, first item on page 24, and that's departmental reply regarding the Aradian gold mine. Um, we had received correspondence in relation to the planning application for the gold mine and had forwarded it to the department for comment. Uh, the department has responded that an environmental statement was not required to uh, accompany the application. Queries on the inaccuracies of maps should be resolved between landowners themselves and the developer, and uh, the Aradian is responsible for the discharge of site drainage within a specified area agreed uh, with the NIEA. A case file has been opened on the complaint received, and the site has been uh, inspected, and whilst it has been marked with tape, no uh, stripping of peat has taken place. Uh, members, uh, have you any comments on this, or are you content to note and forward a copy of the reply to the original correspondent? <coughs> Uh, I think we should uh, forward the reply. We'll forward that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it's quite There's a detailed a... response from the department. Uh, have, we, have we ever got an answer to the question about a house that has to be demolished? There's a house in close proximity to the proposed gold mine, and uh, apparently it's part of the planning approval that this house belonging to Keenan's has to be demolished. Who? So uh, belonging to the developer. Belonging no to an objector. An objector. Belonging to an objector. There, there is a, uh, a requirement on this 200-year-old house to be demolished to make way for the gold mine. I wonder if we ever got any feedback on that aspect of it. it might be worth asking the department to explain why a 200-year-old house would have to be demolished to give way, uh, despite the fact that the owner of that house is objecting. Mm. Mm. And I think I think there's also a requirement. Several. Several. Uh, I think we have there, something there have else. There have been several uh, items of correspondence yeah. on this, yeah. which yeah. we're still awaiting yeah, okay. replies to. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Well, then uh, it may be incorporated in our original correspondence. Yeah. Okay. So Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. That was from Peter. Peter came in. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. We will. Uh -huh. We'll wait until then before we the response to us and members. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be told about it. Uh, the next item is on page 26. Uh, that's the departmental reply regarding minibus break test. The department has responded to concerns raised by St. Mark's Church, Portadown, in relation to brake efficiency testing and weight restrictions for drivers without a D1 license. Um, Department has clarified that brick testing frequency is not a legal requirement, but a guide to best practice developed by the trade associations. While the frequency of safety inspections may be reduced, the operator must be confident uh, that the vehicle is roadworthy. The weight restriction for drivers without D1 on the driving licence is a legislative provision has been in force for 14 years. <coughs> and is consistent with the rest of the UK for drivers driving a minibus on uh, their car licence. So, members, any comments on this, or are you content to note and forward a copy of the reply to the original correspondent? Okay, thank you. Then the next item is at page 29, uh, departmental reply uh, regarding bus operator licensing and volunteer car drivers. 
Uh, the committee had requested information on the position of volunteer car drivers and the department's timescale for dealing with this issue. Um, the department has confirmed a car shall not be regarded as a public service vehicle if it is not adapted to carry more than eight passengers in addition to the driver. Uh, the payments made in respect of the journey do not exceed the running costs of the vehicle for the journey. And three, uh, the payment uh, arrangements were made before the journey begins. The department has no plans to change this legislation in the near future. So, any comments on this, members, uh, in relation to um, our legal advice as well? Last time, some members were not here, uh, but we received some legal advice. And previous to that, we had uh, presentations from the rural community transport. Okay, members, are you content to note? Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is page 31. And that's the five council scheme of uh, delegation. Uh, following the recent uh, committee visit to Scotland, five council has forwarded an extract from its schemes of delegation by councillors to officials in relation to planning. Uh, also at page 36, members, there is statistical information on the number of planning applications processed over the last few years in five. So, members, are you content to note? I think we, we need to write back and thank five council uh -huh. for sending us the information. They really have been there. Uh, yes, they send it to us by email, so we oh, have the website. We, the yeah. we oh, OK. It. OK. Members content uh, to move on. Next item, uh, page 37, departmental reply regarding capacity building and training to accompany the introduction of the councillors' code of conduct. Uh, it is proposed that training for councillors on planning matters will be compulsory and that members will not be able to sit on planning committees until they have undertaken the relevant training. Uh, guidance for councillors dealing with planning matters is currently being drafted by the department and will issue for consultation in May and, and June. Training will then roll out from September onwards once the guidance has been finalised. Uh, members, any comments on this? Chair, just to clarify, I've only just seen the letter there. Just, um, in terms of when we're talking about compulsory, I mean, it has to be compulsory for everybody, and also then there's the additional thing. I'm just wondering, there may be some councillors who may be quite keen to run from being on the planning committee as fast as they possibly can, on the basis that it gives them the, the free hand to actually comment on everything that's happening locally. I presume just in terms of that, therefore, the compulsory will mean that everybody has to do it, no matter what, because you may get a situation where actually some councillors may use that as a convenient excuse not to be on the planning committee if ODRI can make it to any of the, the planning, any of the, the training sessions. So we we'll just, just get a wee bit of clarification just from the department, and that might be helpful. And I think we need to also ask the department about the code of conduct, because the standards and privileges yeah. committee is reviewing the code of conduct for the assembly at the moment, and there will be changes to the code of conduct. And I understand the current code of conduct for proposed for the councillors um, are more or less the same as the current assembly code of conduct. Well, so, Chair, uh, the, the other bit in relation to that, and I don't know whether um, the motion on the code of conduct is now going to be due up on the 19th of May, just being agreed at the business committee. Yeah, yeah. So we need to, to check on that. Do that. Yeah, yeah. The, the consultation ended recently, so no code of conduct. Yes, it is last, last week, isn't it? the thirtieth of April. So um, we need to ask them: Are they taking into account you know, the, the the revision in the assembly's uh, standards and privileges? Although, I mean, the committee, the, the standards and privileges committee, is not going to have the new set of code of conduct until towards maybe September and October. So, um, well, so this code of conduct needs to be in place for the 23rd of May. Yeah. The yeah. department is expecting a written briefing from the department on what is going to be in the code of conduct. We should have that for the next meeting. Yes, we will see the synopsis of responses fairly soon as well, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So, um, we just want to know you know what what will be their plan if there were if there are changes in the assembly. We don't want to see maybe two different sets of 
code of conduct and for one lot of politician, one lot of pub, uh, public representatives, and you know, another set for for another set. So Just to try, yeah, try. There may be some things that you know can be put in to be incorporated into the the council's mm -hmm. code, and, but clearly some of the presentations we received. We're saying that they should be done in tandem together, but obviously yeah. they're time bound now in terms of the council. So. Yeah, sure. Okay, Chair, just in relation to this uh, uh, training, the extent of it, I'm just reading here training. Uh, the training will take the form of specific events targeted at councillors, including role playing scenarios for planning committee members. Now, does that mean that a, um, a member who has not gone through this role play, as they call it, uh, will not be able to take a role in making planning decisions? I think it's probably part and parcel of the whole training programme. And will so they then be getting signing off as competent people who can make these decisions? Is that what we're talking about here? If they don't complete the whole training programme, probably they won't be qualified to sit on the planning committee. Will they get a certificate of qualification? <laughs> I'm not sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. There will be another title after their name. <laughs> and what happens to the, all the planning applications up until these people are brought up to speed? Well, the new powers are not going to be transferred until next year, mm. 2015. So they'll have them all trained? And yeah, all trained yeah. by May 2015. With certificates yeah. of competence in the yeah. top of it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm not sure about certificate, but anyway. <laughs> you know, well, and often anyway. the training, the training will, will need to be yeah. completed. Yeah. They'll need to run yeah. together. That's very good. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is at page 39. That's the Marine Conservation Workshop report. Um, as requested by us, members have been provided with a copy of the workshop report, which took place on the 19th of March. Um, remember, unfortunately, we were unable to attend. Uh, the report details the proposed areas for MC sets and includes uh, presentations made at the workshop. So the next workshop will take place in October 2014 uh, when the committee hopes uh, to attend. So uh, Sonny will, will let members know nearer the time to see who will be available to attend. Is it on a Wednesday again? I don't or? know. I haven't got a date yet. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, just remind them. Uh, don't make it on a Thursday morning. <laughs> if they can facilitate us on Wednesday, uh, there will be maybe more people available to attend. And Standard privileges. Yes. Well, morning maybe. But it's never going to, to suit everyone, so yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, members then, um, we moved on to the next item. That's at page 80. Departmental reply regarding DVA job losses uh, in response to DVA employees. The department has indicated that the minister has asked all executive colleagues uh, to consider what functions could be relocated to Corrine to provide work for the vehicle licensing staff. Ministers have been asked to respond by the end of April on the proposals, and this will enable a further assessment of the situation at the beginning of May and an appraisal of the options for managing staff surplus as they materialise from the end of July. Members, any comment on this? Um, Sonny, we, we ask the department to keep us you know, up to date with, with all this. Yeah, because 200 job losses is just you know, colossal for, for the town of Corrine or the surrounding areas, I'm sure. Yeah. Chair, yeah. some of us have constituency concerns in the matter, you know. Like in West Tyrone, my concern is OMA. You know, the fact that six jobs are to be lost in OMA, but yes. can they be absorbed into civil service postings in OMA? And I don't think the committee is the place to progress maybe individual mm -hmm. constituency okay. requests, but that would be my concern. Your concern, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, members, then we moved on. Uh, item 4.9 at page 84, departmental reply regarding HGV road user levy. Uh, the committee has asked the department for clarification of the position with regards to the HGV road user levy. 
The department has confirmed that currently all Northern Ireland hauliers are paying the levy and it is being collected in combination with vehicle excise uh, duty and that significant numbers of Irish hauliers have also paid the levy via the online payment scheme. Uh, this is being carried out under the UK legislation. The Department intends to bring forward subordinate legislation to enforce fixed penalty notices as an alternative to prosecution. It has not yet entered into any agency agreement with DFT uh, to provide an enforcement regime on behalf of the Secretary of State for transport and is unlikely to do so until issues around the exclusion of the A5 um, have been uh, resolved. The Minister is currently awaiting Minister Goodwill's uh, response to, this most recent, to his most recent letter on an exemption for the A5. The Department does not consider that uh, its current position puts the UK at any significant risk of infraction. So, members, any comment on this? Just what exactly is the department doing at this time uh, with regard to deploying its officials to stop and uh, have a conversation with hauliers from the south? You know, that's happening in Inniskillen, it's happening in Newry, it's happening at the Ballygolly roundabout. What are the, what are the nature of those conversations? If there isn't an enforcement regime in place by DVA or DOE at this time, then what is the purpose of that exercise? Well, I said, I'm not well, aware I'm, that they are stopping, and they you're are. aware that they are, yeah. they are stopping Holly. Yeah. 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 Yes, our yeah. previous yeah. correspondence yeah. we and considered fine. indicated that what had happened mm. was they were just drawing it to their attention. Yeah. Okay. There was no mm -hmm. enforcement. Yeah. Did we, sorry, to have no enforcement at this date? No. Not at the moment, not yet. Yes. I thought we were informed one day there was enforcement. No, no, they're still working out with DFT, the with DFT whether, you know, who's, you know, how we're going to do it. So it needs to be like a contract for us to do it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's in your page uh, 87. Sorry, not 87, 80. Uh, yeah. Page in 84, 85, yeah. So the whole thing is still hinging on... Uh, minister's conversation with, with uh, the minister in, yeah. in uh, the Department of Transport about the exemption of, of the A5. So uh, this seems to be dragging on a bit. If we can you know, write to the department and just ask, you know, to give us an Take clarification on what exactly yeah, is taking happening. place at this time. Yeah, what's happening at the moment? You know, this is he the planning? Yeah, is he planning? When when is the meeting going to take place between the minister and Mr. Uh, Goodwill and? To, to you, chair. I mean, yeah. we asked for clarification. Now this is going to be the third time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About four weeks ago or five weeks ago, I brought to the committee's attention that somebody already paid the fee for a year. Okay. So I asked the question that time: Is this operating or is it not operating? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to seek clarification on exactly what's going on. Could we, could we find out exactly what is going on? I mean, I don't know what's an operation or not an operation, or could you stop? I know that people have been stopped. Okay, okay. So, yeah. I mean, it's either enforcement or non enforcement, or yeah. still sitting there where the two ministers speak, or whatever the case may be. Okay. There's no okay, what is it? Yes, it's, yes. I think currently they are just advising people yeah. this is yeah. going to come. But it's difficult, I'm sure, for the OE staff to be saying that to this, you know, bell, whether. There is going to be an exemption or not, and yeah. yeah. But Chair, is this not? I mean, this uh, correspondence that we have in front of us is quite clear in some aspects, and that is, say, the department has not at this point entered into an agency agreement with the Department for Transport to provide an enforcement regime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, no exceptions. I mean, we're getting conflicting. I mean, that is clear. If that is the position, yeah. But is there enforcement going on out there? I mean, I, and I don't want to keep going through this because we've asked yeah, this, yeah. I think, on four occasions, and we're getting different answers. But anyway, I suppose that's such as life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, Only what is clear is that there is no 
no enforcement at the moment because there's no one. Yeah, well, I know that's fair. No, yes, yeah. and that does say that. That yeah. says that, yeah. but yeah. I think we have got anti to Pick up as well. Carl's point earlier. I mean, you wonder just whenever, for example, say a is getting stopped, as currently. I mean. To be fair, probably the, the officials inside the Infidious position, because I mean, what are they saying? Mm. Here's a leaflet. There's no enforcement at present. Yep. There but might be some enforcement in the future. <laughs> it may yeah. work out a different way on it, yeah. but we're, we're not really sure. I mean, what sort of message does that send out to people? I, I suspect I suspect the Hollier is probably, with the best one in the world, more confused <laughs> after they've been stopped and got them forward. And I can see actually, apart from that, it probably leads to the official a little bit of an embarrassing yeah, situation. Absolutely. You know, what, the, yeah. what exactly what message do they send out to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so maybe you know we, we we need clarification ASAP rather than this to this confusion to go on and on. Yeah. But Chair, haven't we asked that no disrespect have we asked for that now on three occasions? We have. Clarification, and we get more confusion. Yeah. Than mm -hmm. Clarification. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're right and asked them. Okay. okay. Sorry, right. <coughs> Chair, just a few things more. <laughs> <laughs> if it's possible. The legislation is in place. Yeah. 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 But not enforcing it. But not enforcing it. But they're not enforcing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. No. Just like saying the, the legislation's there that you must have insurance to drive your vehicle. But if you're caught without insurance, then there's no enforcement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what sort of message are we giving out to people as well. You can get away. <laughs> yeah, although the, the Lord is there. Yeah, no, yeah. The yeah. 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 unfortunately. Yeah. 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 But isn't there a requirement on the department to come before this committee before that enforcement regime would commence? Yeah. yeah. It has to be like this. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, members, uh, we moved on then. The next item is at page 87, uh, departmental reply regarding the more NAOMB residents group comments on the ASSI designation. Um, residents from the more NAOMB believe that they have not been adequately consulted on the designation of an ASSI. The department has outlined the procedures carried out by the NIEA during process of statutory consultation with local landowners and residents. In the case of the Mons ASSIs, the Minister NIEA was satisfied that a declaration should proceed in accordance with the statutory duty to protect the features of the area during the ongoing consultation, which is due to end on the 31st of July. 2014, there have been a number of engagements with the residents' groups on the ASSI designations. Um, arrangements are also presently being made for NIE officials to attend site meetings with representatives from the residents' groups to explain the scientific interests in situ. Members, any comments on this? Chair, I'd like to say. I'm deeply unhappy at the way the department have managed it in NIEA in particular. Uh, they know that, I've told them so. Yeah. Um, and I don't accept uh, the, their explanation. Uh, while they may have, have met on a very limited number of occasions, the reality of it is they just go and put a designation on an area and then decide to talk about it afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's totally unfair. Okay. I'm not. I'm not making any judgment on mm -hmm. the areas, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they do need to go and explain to the people properly why they're putting the designation on the areas before they actually mm -hmm. do it. Mm. I think they they put uh, the cart before the horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. And then you make people lose confidence in public consultations when you know, they think that it's already decided and whatever they say is not going to make any difference and it's yeah, going to be over the head decided by the department. Yeah. Um, what actions, members, would you want us to take? Just the update, Janet. There, we have actually received another letter from the morning AOMB group just this morning. Um, we have, they're not happy with how we have, it says they're about meeting. Meetings taking place with NIEA and the group, and they're not happy with either of those either. <coughs> and they've written again to the committee asking to meet the committee. So we'll consider that on the uh, right. okay. 
who considers it. Yeah, if you want to consider that response. Okay. Okay. Sure, so, it might have been useful. I think, didn't we agree that you and any other members who who wanted to, to meet with some of the, the farmers or managers would do that? It might have been useful, actually, if you could have facilitated. I know it's not easy, but certainly, um, as opposed to a major public meeting, we could have facilitated mm -hmm. a meeting with some a small delegation of the landowners and some of the representatives of NAEA together. Because the only way, because one group will come and tell you one thing, and another group will come the next week and tell you something different. Mm -hmm. The only way is to get them into a room together. Yes. Um, I'm happy if you do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. No, I'll be referee <laughs> between the two groups. Yeah. Yes, we have said we will meet with them soon. Maybe we, we can. We, we'll, we'll look at their response um, next week, then, when members you know, have the, the, the email from them or letter yes, from them. Yes, yeah. it's just outlining so, yeah. how they feel after yeah. meeting with the NAEA. Yeah. 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 And yeah. as I say, they've all asked to brief the committee again. On it, so you may want to wait until you see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. The meeting will be open to all members to yeah, attend, totally. not just myself, obviously. So, okay, members, we moved on then. Uh, it been your members, would you be content if we forward a copy of the response from the department to the residents group? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I would right. expect another response. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Go on then, forever and uh, and a day. Uh, next item is page 80 members, uh, funding for the North West Management Group. Uh, we asked the department to clarify how capital funding in respect of the North West Region Waste Management Group uh, was to be relocated. Um, now the procurement on the project was no longer taking place. Uh, the department has indicated that no specific capital funding was allocated to the project in the current budget period, but that the executive had been willing to provide support up to 35 million over the next 14 years if the procurement of infrastructure had proceeded. So we um, only if it was going to proceed. So now that when the project um, is no longer um, in existence, then that's, that's no capital project kind of uh, earmarked for it. Okay, members content with that? Okay. Um, then next item is at page 92. I'm sorry, I'm just rattling on because I'm aware members have to go back at uh, 2 o'clock back to the chamber. Um, next item, page 92. Departmental reply regarding supplementary planning guidance on anaerobic digestion uh, to PBS 18. The committee considered the synopsis of responses to the consultation on this guidance on the 3rd of April, and we asked for further information on the department's engagement with community organizations. The department intends to notify community organizations when the supplementary planning guidance is published in final form. Uh, this is intended to be carried out through the use of community NI's information dashboard. The department is also considering, in conjunction with DETI and DOD, how best to take forward recommendations of the committees uh, of the uh, communities and renewable energy study. So, members, are you content for the department to proceed with the publication of the final version of the supplementary guidance? Content? Okay, we moved on page 94. Departmental reply regarding consultation on UNECE regulations 129, and that's enhanced child restraint systems. The committee had previously considered the department's proposals to transpose UNECE regulations. Uh, to Northern Ireland law, but uh, members had asked what the department is going to encourage parents to utilise um, existing child restraints. The committee had also asked for further information on the financial impact of the introduction of enhanced child restraint systems. The department has encouraged parents and carers and, and older children 
to use the appropriate restraint through a number of educational measures. Additionally, advice on appropriate restraint is available in the Highway Code and through NI Direct. The Department was unable to produce an accurate estimation of the financial impact of the introduction of this regulation, but in the prim uh, preliminary work <coughs> carried out by DFT, a range of markups over current chai restraint system from 10% to 30% was assumed. Members, any comment on this? I think we were concerned that it may cause financial burden on parents if they have say, two or three children or needing your new, new um, child restraints. Um, so they seem to be saying uh, upgrade. Sometimes you could do rather than buying new, new kind of car seats and car restraints. I was content to note. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We moved on then. Uh, next item is uh, tabled, a tabled paper, members, and this is uh, Art Committee reply regarding slurry stories, uh, storage and farmer ID. We asked for clarification on whether a farmer and landlord who lets his land is no longer defined as an active farmer and will be able to retain farm ID number. Members also asked for information on planning applications for sturdy stores. Uh, the that minister's response to the DOE minister indicated that the changes in the active farmer definition need to be considered carefully by the OE, given their potential impact on planning policy statement 21. Uh, a meeting of DAD and DOE officials to discuss the changes in definition in more detail has been organized for later on this month. The siting and construction of stir, uh, slurry stores is governed by the Department of the Environment through SSAFO regulations and planning legislation. DAD has no legislative role in relation to slurry tanks. Under planning permitted development rights, slurry, uh, slurry stores of up to 500 square metres in grand area may not require planning permission depending on the location of the proposed store. In relation to the committee's questions about formal risk assessment, inspection regime and environmental liability insurance, that has no specific comment to make as these issues would be within the remit of the OE. Members, any comment on this? We were concerned about the maintenance of the slurry tank and the location of them maybe being you know, too close to, to river, uh, rivers or yeah, streams. And just just um, if there, there were leakages, then you know, would, would there be uh, damp pollution? And what about insurance? Would the insurance cover you know, leakages and, in the past? So. Happy with the response from the department, uh, from from the committee and the departments. Okay, uh, moving on then, page ninety-eight. Uh, this is consultation on the draft local government executive arrangements regulations NI twenty fourteen. The draft regulations make provision for the allocation of functions between the local council and its executive. The discharge of functions by an executive and access to meetings and information of an executive. The consultation closes on the 4th of June uh, 2014. Members content to request a copy of the synopsis <coughs> of responses? Yes. Okay, moving on then, page 145. Uh, synopsis of responses to consultation on draft biodiversity strategy for Northern Ireland uh, to 2020. There were 30 responses, all of which welcomed the department's plans for a new biodiversity strategy, but had varying concerns about the details of the proposals. It is likely that the department will want to seek 
further clarification about some of the suggestions that have been proposed. There is clear consensus that further work is required, and the Department will liaise with stakeholders in, pepper, in preparing a final strategy and an implementation plan as a single document by 31st March next year. Are members content for the Department to proceed with making the policy? Yes. yes, thank you. Uh, the next item is an SL1 at page 172. That's the Sulphur Content of Liquid Fuels Amendment Regulations, NI 2014. The amendments are all technical in nature and have a neg negligible operational effect. The 2014 regulations amend the definitions of gas, soy, and heavy fuel oil and update the specified reference methods by which the sulfur content of the fuse should be determined. Um, it's proposed that the regulations which will be subject to the negative resolution procedure will come into force on the 18th of June 2014 to comply with the EU transposition date. Uh, members, are you content for the department to proceed Don't with uh, making the rule? Content, thank you. Then the next item is another SL1 members, and mm -hmm. that's at page 175, Pollution Prevention and Control Industrial Emissions Amendment Regulations 2014. The department carried out a public consultation exercise on these regulations, which ended on the 7th of April. There was only one substantive response which raised no objections, but which did highlight some practical issues. The transposition deadline for this directive is on the 5th of June 2014, as it creates new offences. It must be cleared by the executive and the regulations made by the draft affirmative process uh, following a debate in the Assembly. So the committee was briefed on these regulations at our meeting on 1st of May. Uh, members, are you content for the Department to make the rule? Great. Thank you. Next item at page 180 is an SR members. Um, the regul this is the Controlled Waste and Duty of Care Amendment Regulations, NI 2014. The regulations provide clarification in relation to the classification of a number of items contained in the tables to the schedule. Members considered the SL1 at the meeting on the 10th of April when we were content for the department to proceed with making the rule. The rule is subject to the negative resolution, uh, resolution procedure and will come into operation on 30th May 2014. The examiner has not yet reported on the rule. So, members, if I can uh, ask for your agreement uh, that the Committee for the Environment has considered SR 2014 stroke 117, SR 2014 stroke 117, the control, sorry, the controlled uh, waste and duty of care amendment regulations NI 2014, and subject to the examiner's report, has no objection to the rule. Members agreed? Great. Great. Thank you. And we moved on to the next item at page 185, another SR. The regulations were laid in breach of the 21-day rule, but the committee was advised orally, orally of the content during its meeting on the 10th of April, when members noted the uh, department's intention to make the rule. It is subject to the negative resolution procedure and came into operation on 23rd April 2014. The rule allows the department to amend regulations permitting the display of advertisements relating to parliamentary, European Assembly or District Council elections in order re to remove deemed consent for the display of election posters along the Giro Italia route for the duration of the race. Okay. Now that the rule has been submitted to the committee for its formal consideration, the following question needs to be put to members. The Committee for the Environment has considered SR 2014 stroke 118, the Planning Control of Advertisement Amendment Regulations NI 2014, and subject to the examiner's report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Great. 
And I think I think most people seem to have a tear to the ruling anyway. No, you think not? Oh, right. Where about? The jumping chair. <laughs> okay. I was going to dash out well, to you, pull you them down. Off, you read off that much stuff. I just want to lay them to meet. No, you bet. Okay, right. Uh, next item, members, uh, at page one nine three, the wind uh, energy inquiry. At our last committee meeting, uh, members agreed to schedule a number of oral briefings uh, before the summer recess. Uh, members, are you content? with the proposed plan for the inquiry. We looked at it, unfortunately, as members uh, are aware, last week we didn't have a quorum to agree, agree uh, on the schedule. So it seems quite sensible. We have them all Absolutely. arranged before the end of this session. To all the members okay. who want their stand up. Agreed. Members. Agreed. Okay, agreed. Then next item is at page agreed. 194 on the same uh, issue of our inquiry. That's the uh, draft stakeholder list for committee events. So, uh, members, you have been provided with a draft uh, list of stakeholders to be invited to a long gallery event on the 12th of June. Okay. The event will focus primarily on community engagement, and these stakeholders have been suggested in order to reflect an appropriate and diverse range of views. Uh, members, are you content to agree to stakeholder list Great. and uh, content? For the Secretariat to issue invitations? Chair, yes, content yep. up to this point. I see, or maybe I'm missing some. Is it only for Manor Council has an interest in this? Oh, Kickstown and Edith as well. Kickstown. What about Owen Straban? And yeah, they're all there. They're all there. They're all there. Yeah, yeah. All the councils. Okay. They're all there. Sorry. That's generally the way we do it, only when they have submitted written um, reply responses to us, we invite them to, the to come from the stakeholder. Chair, I'm not sure. In, in this particular instance, I, I feel that local councils should be a statutory consultee mm. on the like of this in particular mm. yes. uh, councils in relation to um, our committee should be automatically on, on our list of consultees all of them but that's only a part of you Consultant. not just those yeah. who make a they're on we, 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 we wrote out to them all yeah. and we asked all of them okay. for a response to yeah. our original whenever we were originally asking for evidence and there were only there were about five or six oh, which was responded um, out of those five or six, some of them indicated that they didn't have any comment on the community engagement aspect of our inquiry at all. They only made responses to the other terms of reference of the inquiry. And since the event is primarily focused on community engagement, that's why we, we didn't ask. There's one or two other councils which did reply, but we didn't ask them because they'd indicated they had no response. In fact, one of them said that they didn't wish to comment on community engagement. Well, and chair, and they probably feel they have no role in this well, because they'll they have a role when one goes up in their area. Uh, you'll find. Yeah. <laughs> true, so, yeah. true. You're right. Yeah. Have an interest yeah. then. Yeah. Well, okay. true. The chair, as the question has to be asked then, chair, as long as we give councils an opportunity to respond, because mm -hmm. at least then they go back. Mm -hmm. But Lord Ball was right. The first, <laughs> the first sign of one he's going to offer her for him that then there's going to be a yeah. response from the council. Yeah. 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 You know, but yeah. it's grand. If, if we're content yeah. that we give them the opportunity yeah. to respond, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Members, we moved on. So, uh, next item uh, is correspondence. Uh, we have the correspondent cover note with suggested actions uh, at page 198. Members, just draw you to a few items uh, for your attention uh, at page 201. Uh, this correspondence from a member of the public regarding opposition to propose power station for LAN. Uh, this correspondence was also forwarded mm -hmm. by the Regional Development Committee. So, members, you contended we, for, in the first instance, forward this to the Department for their comment? Great. Okay. Nick, I. Yes, a lot more. Yeah, I'm, sorry. Just, uh, friends, I'm just interested. Uh, no, I've got it now. 
uh, this constituent or individual lives in Larne area, is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no Larne or not interested in that other subject we were talking about. Right, fair enough, go on. No. <laughs> okay, next next item then. Next item, members. Okay, uh, next item is at page two o two, and that's correspondence. That's correspondence from our SPB regarding funding concerns for the rural development program uh, for twenty fourteen to twenty. Uh, members, are you content if we forward this to OFM DFN as requested by them? Uh, they were sending to us to ask us to send it to FM, DFM. So suppose we just just uh, follow their, their request and send it off to the committee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fine. Okay. The next item is at pages 207 and 215, copies of correspondence regarding the Radian gold mine. Uh, members, are you content? Uh, if we uh, to write to the correspondents asking that they forward to the committee copies of any responses received. Agreed. Okay. Next item is at page 213, and that's departmental reply regarding proposed grey whack quarry. And uh, members, are you content to forward respond the response to the original correspondent who raised the issue? Great. Okay, at uh, page 218, um, request a brief on the Fairhead Tidal project. I must say I've never heard of this, so I'd be quite interested to hear it. So, members, are you content to receive yeah. a briefing on this? <laughs> Not Morrow <Mara> looked <laughs> a bit reluctant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there should be a lot of Tito waves and potential, I think, for yeah, for no. renewable energy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if members don't want it, I'm I'm quite happy yeah, can, to meet meet yeah. them outside of our regular meetings. Great. Great. Would members be happy? Sure that, that would at least leave up if you felt there was something that was really very yes. important for me. It would, it would leave the door open in that regard. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 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 Oh, I, or we can then take a trip up to to land uh, to Fairhead to see it. But you're going to say Lands End. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Okay, members. Then uh, we'll write to them and, and arrange a date and let members know uh, if anyone wants to join me or, uh, for that meeting. So next item is at page a uh, pages two one nine two three seven three, and those are just um, correspondence for members to note. Okay. The next item, members, is forward work. Program um, just at page 375. The minister has asked uh, to brief the committee uh, at our meeting on the 19th of June. This is one of his regular engagement with the committee. So we uh, welcome that. Members content to, to agree that? Great, great. Yep. Next item uh, is, is proposed that we hold the next meeting of the committee at lunchtime next week, Tuesday. On the 13th of May, uh, one departmental briefing has been scheduled for this meeting on the road traffic uh, amendment bill, which is due to be referred to the committee on the 27th of May. So, uh, members, we we have emailed around members to suggest that instead of holding uh, our regular meetings over the next two Thursday, we are going to have them on Tuesday lunchtime. Are members content we Sounds do that? All right, sure. uh, given the difficulties Please. last week when yeah. we didn't have a quorum, so it makes sense. I'm, I'm happy enough to have a thing of complication on the 13th, and I think that from an optimistic similar position, the Commission's agreed to actually meet, in the, on the, the Assembly Commission's agreed to meet on the 13th after, at lunchtime, but I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, won't, I don't want to stand in the way of the committee meeting on the 13th. Just if maybe it may be, I'll have to apologise uh, for that. Okay. Committee too. Okay. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah, we agree on each other. I think there's another party. We're happy enough. Some will cover. Some can cover. Do you want to go back to Thursday? I mean, if you think there may be difficulties, we can go back to Thursday next week, not Tuesday. That's right, Tuesday too. I don't want 
always gets the option if there is who yeah, else someone's Yeah, then we're going to go back yeah. to Thursday. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, we moved on. We circulate, uh, you know, around just, just to confirm uh, attendance. Then we'll, I hope members will please, if you can, you know, come then let us know early. Then we can rearrange things. Okay, members then. Uh, so next thing, it will be nothing, and then next meeting will be Tuesday at 12.45. Okay, thank you. Okay, members, thank you. This is...